Moving on, we have an article from Chris Idoff called Dependencies, why we got rid of most uh, dependencies. And I wanted to share this, uh, you know, we've talked about this a lot on the channel about how my opinion, which is kind of agreeing with Chris here, is I like to use third-party libraries very sparingly, like almost as a last resort. Uh, and you know he illustrates some of the reasons, right? It's not that I don't like third-party code. However, a lot of the projects I've worked on have been around for quite a few years, which also means keeping their dependencies up to date. You know, sometimes API breaks, sometimes there's security issues, sometimes the dependency is just not maintained anymore. Very often, the dependency stops working when I upgrade my machine. It's just again. Think of the word dependency. You're depending on somebody else's code. So in my opinion, like I wanna limit that. And maybe I'm scarred from the Swift 2 to Swift 3 uh, conversion. Uh, many of you were probably around for that. You know how much of a nightmare that was. Uh, if you weren't around for that, basically Swift 3, had tons and tons of breaking changes in your code, kind of like broke everything. I think the Swift team was like, you know what, let's rip the Band-Aid off now while we're early, because since that major conversion, there haven't been a lot of like breaking changes uh, in the Swift update. So I think that was their chance to just like get it all out of the way now. But anyway, it was a huge conversion, took many people, many, many weeks to do, but that also meant your dependencies like had to be like converted uh, as well. And maybe that was my fault for wanting to go to Swift 3 right away, young, naive, early career developer Sean wanted to be on the latest and greatest for their app. The point is you're relying on other people's code. So uh, we'll go down to the summary here. Uh, there are many upsides to fewer dependencies, right? You understand the code. Uh, it's written in your style. You don't have to spend time keeping the dependencies up to date. You can fix issues uh, yourself without having to wait for something to be approved. For example, yes, a lot of these dependencies are open source. Maybe you submit a PR, maybe they don't review or approve the PR for weeks, and then you gotta wait for it to get merged into master, and then like, it's just, it's a mess. Whereas if you wrote it yourself, you have all that. Now, there's downsides as well. For example, the code isn't as battle tested uh, as other code out there. You know, you may not be able to build the feature rich thing that's something that is established can be. So there are trade offs, of course, as with everything. But I don't know, my take on it is if something takes me a couple days to write myself, I will probably write it myself. And now you may be thinking, oh, you're going to spend a couple days writing something when you could just bring in a library, like save your time, work on something else. And, you know, in certain situations, you know, if you're one developer on a tight deadline, you're right. But there's also like an investment into your code base. So a couple days may seem like a lot, you know, maybe in the beginning, but in the long lifetime of your code base, I believe that is a worthwhile investment to not have to deal with all this stuff we talked about with the dependencies. So that's just my take on it. I would love to hear your take in the comments and definitely check out this article from Chris. This was a clip from an iOS development news show that I put out on a monthly basis. If you like this sort of stuff and you want to see the complete show, check out my channel. I got a whole playlist of them. And if you want to check out Swift News as it's released, I put it out at the beginning of every month. See you in the next one.